You lived through so much, having been born in 1929. 28. 28. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. So you were a child in the 1930s. What do you remember from that time? There's just so much to remember. That now I think, as I look back, I know I realize how poor we were, but I didn't realize we were poor. We didn't have television to remind us that we were poor. First generation mainland born Puerto Rican. My parents are born in Arecibo, Puerto Rico. And my siblings and my parents are all deceased now, but they were all born in Arecibo, where the t radio telescope is, by the way. The radio telescope. And you have visited that. So you have took I. me to visit it. That's right. Yes. You were just a kid at that time, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. It had no significance to me at all. Oh, you know, okay. So, but I know it meant something to you. Both of your parents were dead. Yeah. By the time you were what age? Four. So you have no memory of either of them? No, I don't. And so I was brought up by two aunts, and uh, I didn't speak English very well until I went to public school. And then I had a hell of a time because here I was. My name was Sunchita Feliciano. What kind of name is that? Mm. Along with everybody else's name, who's Jim Brown and so-and-so. And, so -and, -so. and Susie Smith. And that's, right, that. yeah. <laughs> that's right. Uh -huh. So Sunchita Feliciano had long black hair and this widow's peak that came down to my eyes. And so I eventually learned. How long was your hair? Very long. Like it, I would be like very butt fashionable. Le butt level. All the way down my back. Mm -hmm. it, my long hair would have been very fashionable today, except it would be gray. <laughs> and then it. <laughs> so when did you meet Dad? Oh man, that's a long time ago. We lived in the same tenement in Harlem, mm -hmm. in Spanish Harlem, two seventeen West One Eleventh Street. We lived in the same building, and then he went off with his family at his when he was about eleven or twelve. And I never saw him again until I was about 20 or 21. Through a mutual friend of ours, a very dear friend of mine, Evelyn King. And we re-met and started dating, and the rest is history. Mm. And as a result of that, you and Stephen and Lynn were a byproduct, and uh, here oh, I am. Oh, just a byproduct? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and so here I am, and here you are. So my earliest memories are in Castle Hill housing projects that over in the East Bronx. Right. So... All housing projects are for people who who need some kind of rent assistance. Fixed income. Fixed income, right, right of some kind. Correct. And so, so they have low-income housing projects and mid-income housing projects correct. in that world. Right. And we were in the mid-income housing project. That is correct. Right. We had to move because we needed additional space. Mm -hmm. My beloved aunt who raised me, who still did not speak English that well, uh, was going to move with us. And then when my aunt died... My mother-in-law moved in with us. So we've always had an older person in that house. And as a result, I think the, the three of you, Neil, Stephen, and, and Lynn, really appreciated having older people around and have always been very kind. So the three of us now, you know, Lynn, me, Stephen, we're separated by six years. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, that's tidy enough to, to manage, I think, because the older one then helps with the younger one. That's, that's right. enough of a mm -hmm. time gap there. Mm -hmm. Did you have any philosophy, you and dad have any philosophy of child rearing? Of course, you had the you had the books, you know. The, no, the no, forget the books. What? Okay. <laughs> First of all, living in New York City is like living in the middle of a learning laboratory. Everything is there, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Anything your child wants to do is there. For instance, Lynn fell in love with horses at a very early age. She became an urban mounted ranger in Central Park as a result of this experience. And then we had Stephen who was an, art, an artist from the day first, he was born. Artist, yeah. And uh, he used to live at the Metropolitan Museum of Art and take classes there. And of course, at the Modern Museum of Art. And then you had Neil, <laughs> who was, we, we introduced to the, to the planetarium at a very early age. And that was a fantastic experience for him. He the used Hayden to go Planetarium. To Hayden Planetarium. He used to go to evening classes there. And as a result of being a New York kid, they, they could take public transportation. All they needed was a nickel. Dad, as sociology is his thing, he's working for the city. You, you by prior agreement, rather than go to college, after high That's school, correct. you got married and you became a homemaker. That is correct. By agreement. Agreement. What was the nature of that agreement? The nature of that agreement was a way to stay home with the children and make sure that they're taken care of. In addition to that, you must remember we had an older person living with us. Mm -hmm. 
And then uh, when the three of you were in three different schools and three different parts of the city taking public transportation, I was always concerned about the three of you getting home safely. Stephen went off to college. That's when I went to back to school. I worked at Fordham University, got my, my undergraduate degree, then went to- At Fordham. Co- at Fordham, mm-hmm. then got my- As, as like, a, as like a, an adult. Oh, yes. Getting oh, yes. the undergraduate oh, yes. degree. Oh, yes. So after I got my, uh, my bachelor's, I went to Columbia University and got my master's in, in uh, gerontology, mm-hmm. services to the elderly. And from there, I started my career in working with the elderly population. I directed programs in Queens. So here you are with very significant investment of energy for the aging. There was dad out there concerned about youth in the ghetto, as of course inner city was known back then. And you have this son called Neil, who his brain is nowhere in any of those places, is just thinking about the universe. Was that just weird to you? No, it was not. If that was what you wanted to do, that's what you did. And if you wanted to go to the planetarium, here's a dime, take the bus. It was not weird at all. It, 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 all three of you went in the direction that you wanted to go in. And for that, I was thankful. What was your plan as parents raising children, other than keeping us alive? The great plan was that hopefully, that as a result of being exposed to this, what I call learning laboratory of New York, that you choose your professions and, and pursue it separately. Everybody goes their own different direction. Mm-hmm. So you didn't have any urge for us to become oh, gerontologists? No, or, no, 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 no. Well, sociologists, no, right. no, 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 no. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I mean, homework time at, at home was quite a feat because I had to keep the three of you separate so you wouldn't talk. And you would be in one place fooling around with the lights and fixing the lights and so that when you walk in the room the lights came on with music that was your past, your past time <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if i remember correctly lynn was in the brownies and girl scouts and steve was in the boy scouts but i wasn't in either so no, did, because did you, you make some you judgment played, you played baseball you played, yeah, yeah you played little I, had, I was in the little league yeah right they weren't they didn't do that no they didn't do right. that but you did the little league so just a matter of having an activity that is correct that made sure you were busy all the time anything you would have done differently given the wisdom of 90 years no i have i have no regrets mm-hmm. i have them and if i did it's too late anyhow <laughs> so, 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 so just get on with life okay <laughs> So people who relive their lives and say, oh, I should have done this, I should have done this, I may have. Come on, please. Just get on with it. Take care of the here and now. Just do the best you can now. Mm -hmm. Now is the time to do the best you can. 